Hey everybody, so I'm about to try something that is semi-new to me. I have made a couple of molds um, that just kind of testing it out because I wanted to try it before I could be able to like really, really test it out. And both of the small ones that I did worked. However, I am doing it totally different because I am making, I want to make a mold out of something that I cast out of epoxy. And for the directions, it said that newly cast epoxy could inhibit the curing of the silicone. So I had to wait for like a week to give it time to, um, so it wouldn't be like newly cast anymore. So I've, I've waited and I've been over anxious and I had to work this morning. So I, yeah, so now I'm going to finally try it out. And I thought that while I was trying it out, I would bring you guys along so that you could see. And I guess after, as this is posting, I will know if it worked or not. But of course, before I do it, I don't know if it's going to work or not. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to test it out. I wasn't really able to find any YouTube videos about this, and maybe they're there and I just couldn't find them. So, I'm just going to show you how I did it, and that is definitely not the be-all, end-all. There are different ways to do it. Um, I just know from the two tiny ones that I have done, this worked best for me. So, I'm just going to try and do it, only do it larger scale. So, anyway, here we go. First, we want to start with what we'll need. I use gloves, two large tongue depressors, toothpicks, a measuring cup, packaging tape, and double-sided tape. And also, the silicone rubber that you're gonna use. I found this on Amazon, it's Mold Star 15. First, I begin by putting the double-sided tape on both sides of the back side of the uh, surface I'm going to use. It helps to hold the tape in place. Not necessary, but I've just found this is totally helpful for me. Once you've got your surface taped and prepped, then you need to start laying out whatever it is that you're going to mold. If you have a specific area that you're trying to work inside, you might want to try to lay them out um, inside of it before you put the tape down. I also wiped them off to make sure all the fingerprints were gone. I measured it to see how big the sides of my box needed to be because that's why I said it would be important if you were using a confined shape. I was building mine so I didn't really have a confined shape. Also glue around the bottom of your box or cookie cutter or whatever you're using to hold the silicone in because you don't want it leaking out underneath the mold. Gloves are pretty important at this step just because the stuff that you are working with is very thick and sticky, so you don't want to get it on your hands because it's hard to get off. Begin by stirring each part. They do settle, the components of the parts settle, so you want to be sure that you stir them very thoroughly before you start measuring them out to put into your mixture. So I stir it um, probably several minutes. I don't exactly time it just until it kind of feels like a smooth consistency. Be sure to even scrape the sides of the bottle because um, even if they're standing up they seem to like cling to the sides. So here I'm measuring it. Um, I think that it, the bottle says that it can be, it's a one-to-one -one ratio and it can be weighed or measured. I just feel safer by measuring it. So I just got this measuring cup at Walmart and I just m measured it out at even. I think I did a full cup of each of these for this mold. I also use the toothpicks to scrape down the side of the tongue depressor just to be sure I got it all mixed in good and nothing was sticking to the sides of the tongue depressor. Then you start stirring it together. It probably takes a good um, three to five minutes to get it all stirred and mixed together very, very well. The, the good thing is that since the, each part is a different color, all you do is you stir it until 
they are mixed together and the colors the color is even throughout there are no streaks I usually will go until it looks like they are mixed together well and then I will do it for a minute more here again I'm using the toothpick just to be sure that I get all of the parts off of the tongue compressor to make sure that they are all mixed together very well begin your pour into the mold form that you just fixed a few minutes ago. Pour at the lowest point is what the instructions say because it helps to uh, get rid of the bubbles and just let it find its own level. So you don't need to make it level because it will flow and even itself out. You also don't need a vacuum for this silicone because it will evacuate itself of the air and the, the three that I have done so far there have been next to no bubbles I do make sure that I am pouring it in a coolish location so that it does um, set up slowly so here are what the molds look like as of right now I've still got a little almost an hour before I can uncast them and I think I'm going to give it just a little bit longer than that just to make doubly sure I apparently didn't have it um, glued down very good right there and it's leaking a little bit right there uh, I did have a oh, there's another little place right there that is leaking uh, I did have a I think I made too much of the silicone but I had made up a smaller one just in case and this is a cookie cutter the ones that I had made before I actually used Legos to build the frame and I may do this again because this was a pain in the tail because I was this is thicker like foam board poster board and it was a pain so I think I'm just going to build a big thing of Legos next time if I do any more and like I said this is a cookie cutter and this is the ones that I've seen on YouTube most people use cookie cutters and it worked out really well because like I said I just glued it down so we'll come back here in another hour or so and see how they did I have to take it out of the mold now. I begin by taking the glass off of the back. Um, I loosen up the tape and pull the glass off the back before, obviously, before I can get to any of the rest of it. I pull the tape off and it left it very shiny, which silicone does um, mold to whatever you have molded it to. And since the tape is shiny, it left the silicone shiny, but it was almost so shiny that I wasn't sure if I got all of the tape off, but I had to like look at the tape to make sure that I had it all off. I was a little nervous when I began popping the pieces out because I didn't really know what to expect and I was a little worried because there was a little bit of silicone that had ran underneath the pieces so I didn't I really hated to try and use scissors to cut those off I've seen that you can use a exacto knife but my exacto knife is pretty dull so I didn't know how that would work uh, but when I started pulling them out, the, most of that extra hangover came off when I pulled the piece. I also decided I'd go ahead and pull the form off before I kept popping the pieces out. And it was a little difficult to get off in a couple of places just because of how rough the edges were. See, that one came off pretty easy, but it was smooth on that edge.
So I just wanted to show the start off pour for my new molds that I made today. I just, I wanted to try some different colors. I had to have green, of course, because my poison apples needed green on them. But I haven't really made a whole lot in the yellow or the orange. I don't remember making anything in the orange, but it was open, so I must have at some point. But <laughs> maybe some of the butterflies, I can't remember. Uh, but so I just went ahead and did that, and I've got some of the little ones and the little mold that I made. I finished off some more that I started this afternoon. I started some butterflies and had little pieces left there. But um, yeah, I'll demold them tomorrow and see how it turns out. I know this yellow one is messed up because apparently I um, put the blank in the wrong way and I knew that the back side of it had a flaw in it, but I didn't worry about it because it was the back side. But apparently on the mold, I put it in the wrong way. So um, I think it'll be okay. It's not a huge flaw for one and for another um, if I uh, dome it, it probably won't be a problem either. I waited till the next morning to unmold them just to see how they came out and that was like I said a little bit nerve-wracking because I wanted to see how they did. Uh, overall they were pretty good. There was a little piece on the side of that one that I had to trim off but other than that they came out fairly well. I was also a little nervous about how the sides would turn out where I had had to kind of sand down my original pieces but honestly, I mean, I can tell, but I don't know if, you know, the average person would be able to tell. 